you don't have to until like you see that it's not how the delay is or whatever. Like, um, I'll in the party I'll say, uh, now and then I'll do something, and then see how long it takes for it to happen on the stream. So, now. Alright, so when I say now, I'm going to press up on the D-pad and it's going to go back up to play. Tell me when that happens. Now. Oh yeah, because you have an ad, right? Big oof. Oof, it might take a minute. Because usually it actually appears when there's a minute on the stream. Back on Earth, it's all you hear about. Rain is falling down on the sidewalk. I won't go until you come outside. Dude, <laughs> told me I'm live too on my phone. <laughs> what? Check, yes, Juliet, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, now fall in her arms now. Yeah. I don't know. Uh. I'm not sure. Um. Tell me when your ad is over so I can test the thingy majigger. Alright, so when I, I'm going to say now, and then I'll press down on the D-pad. Now. How long did it take? Alright, so it's decent enough that you could see what's going on on the screen. And like, be like, oh yeah, well this just happened, so. Ah, uh, at least it's not, at least it's not like commentary for the shows when I record it, where it's like, oh yeah, and this happened, what do you think about it? Oh, okay. Oof. Down your chin. So, uh, two people in chat, one of them's probably you, but, uh, <laughs> say hello in chat if you can, not you, though. Actually, you could, too. It'd probably make it seem more active. Ah, oh, fucking, who's this just a stone piece of shit? Now. All right, uh, is it consensual? Oh, okay. All right, so let's let's see what what match should we start with? Yeah. Should we just jump straight into the money in the bank? And have have the game crash within seconds of trying to start the stream. Well, um, don't want to toot my own horn here, but my main event, well, like my world title has higher stakes to it. It's a two out of three falls extreme rules match. Well, then you get it. It's whatever. Doesn't really bother me. I'm just gonna... Dude, fingers crossed that the game doesn't crash. Like, I don't know if this game can actually handle six-man matches. I mean, 
at the very least, I don't know why he has no fucking paybacks. What the fuck? Um. Oh yeah, Roy Pierce is in this. Oops. Uh. Yeah, good for him though. Spooky fingers. No, you need to, yeah. You could do that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Forgot which map Bailey I was supposed to use. Got it, though. I ha I'm starting to have fucking deja vu in my head right now about doing a six-man like this and then the game crashing. But I feel like it was me testing Elimination Chambers, and that's where it glitched and crashed. I don't know. If you set it as a knockout only, it's really good. I've noticed. Well, I did it for the Wrestle Wars. Oh shit. Uh, didn't know that was going to immediately start it. So yeah, here we go. Fingers crossed it doesn't crash. 2k20. Huh. <laughs> Let's see if we can get through last stand. Let's see if this blind commentator now with a two last second delay said. Let's see if that makes it a lot better. Yeah, we're we're a week late to the the actual date that we said. Dude, but you know what? It's whatever. Yeah, at least it's happening. You gotta take the little whims while you can. Okay. Robert, let's go bowling. <laughs> Robert, it's it's your fault. <laughs> let's let's go bowling. <laughs> let's go bowling. <laughs> uh, Dude, I'd, I'd love to go bowling right now. <clears throat> the reason you're clearing your throat so much? Yeah, dude. What's the reason? I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. I think I I think it's actually about to load. <gasps> here we go. Here. Lots of shit going on here. It's going to be hard to follow. Um, after doing blind commentary for a couple shows, this is a godsend still. Yes, indeed. Amber Reed, she's being smart, staying out of the way. Uh, as I say that, she grabs only and doesn't move. Attacking current Intercontinental Champion Roy Pierce. Yeah, they're both, uh, they're both champs currently, too, so that's <laughs> interesting to think about. Well, Amber sees uh, the other champion in the match and has probably the strongest opponent and who she needs to look out for, so neutralizing the early might end up helping her in this match. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, she just got dropped there. It's kind of weird, but uh, yeah. Dan Masters is also a uh, former Intercontinental Champ, so he's got some sort of, you know, advantage going into this. Yeah. Ace Reeves, former open weight champion. It's Ace Reeves in, in Matt his Bailey, best of former seven. tag champ. In his best of seven against Benny. Still, he's up 3 0, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, El Distributor, though, is the only person in this match to not hold a title of any sort. Yeah. So. <laughs> El Distributor is also, I'm pretty sure, the only man in this match who is undefeated. Uh, I don't. 
Oh, yeah, uh, I just realized that Matt Bailey was climbing the ladder outside for a second there. Matt Bailey, that is... You're not going to be able to reach him. You're not dull soon from Street Fighter. Roy Pierce, uh, first to bring in the ladder. None of these p competitors, I almost said men, but that's not how this one works this time. Uh, as far as I'm aware of, none of the competitors in this match have any sort of history with ladder matches in VPW. I don't recall Roy being in one, and I definitely don't recall any of the others being in a ladder match, but I mean, Roy Pierce definitely has been in ladder matches in his career. Same for Dan Masters and Ace Reeves, I bet. So, there's got to be a game plan going into something like this for them. Yeah, at least Roy, as far as VPW goes, he no ladder matches, but as far as uh -oh. matches with these extreme stipulations, that's something Roy has become accustomed to in some of the uh, title defenses back when he was trying to win the world champion for the world championship. Yeah, the Hell in a Cell submission match. What an idea that was. Yeah. How long was that match? Oh, Remember? shit! <laughs> oh, that was so close to being really Ooh. bad for Dan Masters there. I am still a two second delay, so if my reactions are a little bit delayed, please excuse it. But. Yeah. Dan was almost taken out of the match very early. Yeah, he almost lost his head there. Now he's trying. I think he's trying to pick up the ladder uh, as the other ladder falls over. Not a lot of coordination here. No, you wouldn't expect that from. I mean, also. Oh, nice! Here. That was a nice double team there. Ace and Amber working together. Double A's. Uh, yeah, Amber is the the real ace. They're still going after Intercontinental Trank and Roy Pierce. She is not letting him have any room to breathe. Here's not one this bit. Far. Uh, as she's going to try to get that ladder set up to try to get the briefcase, Dan Masters smacks straight in the face with the ladder and setting the ladder up in a very awkward position and decides mm -hmm. against it and sets it up back in the same spot again and then decides against it again. He's just done with the ladder. He can't deal with it. Yeah. Matt Bailey drops the ladder. German suplex to Amber who just gets right back up and hits that running knee. Uh. Uh. uh confused what happened there, but Ace Reeves no longer holds the ladder. Oh, off! Oh, Ooh. so close. So close. <laughs> that boy Pierce is a lot of, a lot of close calls. Yeah, there. As you said, there's not a lot of safe. coordination, but there is Look a lot of this power bump there. on the ladder. Oh. That was Right as they say, working safe, he gets powerbombed on a ladder. Yeah, Ace Reeves is going to need to take that and to lay outside and just, you know, hopefully not be completely out. Oh, of the fuck! Match. El Distributor with the ladder straight to Amber's face and she's busted open. With so much strength taking out two competitors at the same time. Keaton, use the emote. Wait, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Forgot, forgot, forgot. Ignore me. Uh, welcome. Uh, I completely forgot that you can't use the emote because it's a tier two. Mm -hmm. Oh, Matt Bailey hit his head on the steps on the way over the road. Mm -hmm. And it also seems like El Distributor is the only person in the match that knows how to use a ladder as he hits the spear on Roy. Well, to be fair, that's him. You deserve Amber to be injured by top. the top. Ace Reeves pulls her leg off the ladder, goes to kick her. Oh uh, yes, I uh, I would do that, but I don't want to do it while the match is going. Because it'll pause the match. Super super heavyweight on the ladder. There's no way in hell Dan Mass is gonna be able to push that ladder over by himself. Well, he sure is trying, but Oh my, oh no. Oh, neck breaker from the top. Oh, what? And Amber Dan did not want to vomit in the moment to breathe after that much. 
Not at all. And I don't know who got busted open there because it kind of just happened. Ace Reeves on the top rope. What is he going to do? I think he's waiting. Oh, misses the Houston hangover. Ooh. Bailey and Pierce are the last two in the ring as he climbs the ladder. Reaching for the briefcase. Yeah, that's what this wouldn't be the first time that Roy Pierce was Intercontinental Champion and could have a World Championship opportunity. Uh oh. From the top of the ladder, power bomb. Ace climbs up the one side, and Dan Master's not climbing up. He's going to push the ladder over instead. Push. <laughs> and for the second time in this match, he gets clipped on the side of the ladder. Dan, very confusing that he decided to push the ladder over, because as we've seen in this match, does not know how to fucking set up the ladder. Yeah, you, I mean, you'd think he'd get up there, knock him off, so that he can just take the opportunity, but he's not really sure how to set the ladder up properly as it is. Ace and Amber working together to get Dan out of the ring. And, and then Amber getting her getting her uh, comeuppance there by throwing him out and mm -hmm. also getting stuck in infinite motion. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully whatever is going on with her can be resolved in momentarily. She's taking a rest, but she's making sure that blood keeps flowing. Oh, there we go. What is... Oh, no! Cradle shock on the ladder! Oh! Uh -oh. I wasn't expecting that, but that was a, one hell of a way to do that move. I really was tired of, 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 of everything that Amber's done to him in this match so far, and that's definitely one way to get some revenge. Yes, it is, and Roy, Irish whip reversed by Ace, goes for the stop, tossing him over the top rope. Now, El Distributor is setting his sights back on the ladder, but Roy says no. Straight to the face with the ladder. Now he's going to go back up for the second time, I believe, to try to win this matchup. Yep. Roy was the last man to have his hands on the total. Uh, oh, non case. case. Yep. So, he's a champion. Oh, so. no. We might see both competitors hitting the mat here in a second. Now Dan's a little bit too weak to do that, yeah. apparently. Dan can can only push the ladder over if there's one. Oh no, there. Amber's left up there alone. Matt Bailey, not, he stopped. Amber Reed Amber. just won the, won the money in the bank. Matt Bailey just threw the match and let her win the briefcase. She has not won but two world championship opportunities as a possibility for her. If she successfully defends that TV title again, I, I think one or two more times, she gets an automatic world title match as it is, but she has the Money in the Bank briefcase in her possession now. She is a very dangerous person to have. No matter you know, what, just she, there. Has, she has just one world title match. Like you said, if she's able to defend it two or three more times, then she could become the world champion, and then not only be the world champion, but have her own security for if she ever loses that title and can't claim it. And who's to say she has to def she has to cash in on the the men's champ? She could cash in on the women's champ at this rate. I mean, she's already breaking records of being the first woman to hold the TV title. She just w beat five other men in a Money in the Bank. She could be the first woman to have the women's and the men's world championship. She could. All right, so uh, let's get on to our next matchup here. Let's see what we could do. Mm. Banks and Walker. Yeah, I don't want to see who's going to get a mid-core title match. I accidentally hit the right stick. I meant to do left stick. Smooth. Which one is it? That's that one. 
They're identical. <laughs> no, one has uh, white eyes, basically. Uh, the other one doesn't. I cannot see from here. Yeah, one's got really bright white eyes, the other one doesn't. <laughs> what a way to start off the show, though, with Amber Reed picking up the Money in the Bank briefcase. Yeah. Or un unhooking it more so than picking it up. But. Yeah, yeah. Avery just coming on one ridiculous roll here in VPW, and she... Hello, Eli. Hello, uh, Eli. Skitty. You missed the opening bout. Oh, I'm reloading the I, uh, screen between I'm, matches. I'm honestly level. feeling... I'm feeling bad for uh, Ace Reeves, if anything, in that match. He landed on the ladder, what, two or three times? Yeah. And then Amber, I felt bad for her a little bit, but she clearly recovered perfectly fine. Yeah, uh, I mean, he, nothing helps heal sore. Man, I really fumbled over my words there. Nothing helps heal injury yeah. more than that briefcase, and knowing that no matter what, she has a guaranteed world title match for the men's or the women's. Yeah. Uh, it's just hope that she doesn't end up injured like Dustin Weaver was. Yeah. Because she definitely landed on the, the edge of that ladder very hard. And definitely doesn't deserve it as much as Dustin did. Yeah, Dustin Weaver sucks. Yeah. Anyways, on to the match here. Benny Banks versus Ethan Walker. Benny Banks off of a loss against uh, Ace Reeves. The plan was basically the loser got this consolation prize, basically. And uh, that's how we got here. Ethan Walker uh, basically asking general manager Justice Stone for an opportunity, and he finally got one. Yeah, he was either going to be in the money in the bank or in this match. From Manchester, England. And he's been wanting to change for Uprising. Or not Uprising. Yes, uprising. He's on Uprising. Man. I'm my brain's really out of it. Uh, so put it back right, then. Oh, yeah. I really need to. But he's been wanting change. He's been complaining that he has to be getting the shots. So Justice Dome is giving him the opportunity to become the change that he wants to see. All he has exactly. to do is win this match tonight, and he has a guaranteed title match against Roy Pierce. Yeah, and if he goes up against Roy Pierce, he's got possibly an easy match going for him with uh, how things just went for Roy in that ladder match. Yeah, that's always a thing that they got to have in. Roy just has to hope that either Ethan loses or if Ethan pulls it off, then he's just as badly hurt as Roy is, which... By all that Amber did, it won't be an easy task. No, it won't. But Benny, he's got a very big task ahead of him here because he's on a massive losing streak. Not just, you know, not just one match. Not two. He hasn't won a match since before he was drafted. So he hasn't won a match in months. And this is a big opportunity for him. I mean, even if Benny does win here tonight, you would have to think that... I mean, he still wouldn't be taken seriously in his title match. Due to, like you said, the long losing streak that he's been on. Yeah, and, I mean, the guy's a... He's a former Cruiserweight champ, former Intercontinental champ, and it sucks to say that he's not being taken seriously. But when you have a case like his where he's, like, like I already said, on a massive losing streak, how do you take a guy seriously at that point? I mean, where was he exactly one year ago in the last, last stand pay-per-view? 
He was in the main event against Justice Stone. Yep, and now here he is, hoping to end a losing streak. Time, he hasn't had the best year in VPW, but I mean, a win here would definitely be a very big up for him that he might need to get back on track. Yeah, within the year of the the last stand, 2019 and 2020, he was an Intercontinental Champion. But being Intercontinental Champion is one thing, and he didn't defend it successfully. He lost it, so he's got he's got to make up for something here. He's got to get back up to where he used to be. And Ethan Walker is trying to make a name for himself in in his own right. Those elbows to the gut. You know, Benny, uh, with that worst moonsault ever that he's, he used to do so frequently, the amounts of times it's been reversed probably doesn't help his ribs from the, you know, those people put those knees up. And as soon as those knees go up, he's done for. As he uh, goes for a suplex and gets a knee to the top of the head. Uh, speaking of knees, it's, it's like Ethan was able to hear you from all the way where you were. Yes. Uh, I don't know where I am. No, just away. I think I'm next to the ring, but it might be those three weird dudes in the suit that sit on people's laps sometimes. Yeah, I just don't know how to keep doing that. It's kind of weird. Benny, I thought he was going to go for a springboard, but... He's a little bit less flashy than he used to be. This was Benny, you know, a year and a half ago. He probably would have went for that springboard because he was a, li a little bit more cocky, more confident. And he had every reason to be confident. But lately, he's lost all ability to win matches. And that's a very big confidence uh, vacuum, I guess you could say. I don't know. Even in his uh, best of seven series with eights, where he's down zero wins to three, even though he's still trying to show off and be cocky, but that's actually what ended up causing him the match in the in the last episode. That last of one. He ended up taunting, blowing kisses in the face. They're playing Ring Around the Rosie right now. Ethan got the better of him there for a second. But Benny really needs to get back on the right track uh, as he ran into the steps there. Yeah, that's the game. Don't worry. Yeah, I no. I could turn camera cuts off, but you know, I kind of yeah. like it. Yeah. Benny Banks has a count of four of twenty, so uh, uh, he's got plenty nice. of time to work over Ethan Walker on the floor here. Yeah, I mean, it could be something he uses to, I mean, swing the rest of the match in his favor. Because everything Ethan's done out here, he has been able to encounter. Yeah. Now he's going after that arm. I don't know the history of Ethan Walker, and I'm not exactly sure why he's got that sleeve on his uh, his right arm there. Maybe it could have been an, a, like an old injury, and Benny knows more than I do, and he's trying to make that injury resurface. I mean, Benny needs to take advantage of any opportunity that he can, and if he thinks that's a former arm injury, then, I mean, good on the kid for at least trying, doing everything that he can to try to break this streak. We need to get this back in the ring, and I think Ethan heard me yet again. I really need to tell, if I want to have him listen to me, I should probably say, take the loss so Benny can stop losing all these matches. Oh, but, no, that, he definitely won't listen to that. This man yeah, wants... I don't think so. He's too driven. Benny with the kick out at will Getting right back up. Go after Ethan. And with it completely. Yeah, but he, he's continuing on the assault. He's actually getting these attacks now. Off the ropes. Penalty kick. Double stomp to the chest. That's something we don't see Benny do very often. Uh, or, you know, mostly because he never gets that far into it. Brainbuster on the knee. 
Maybe taunting him a little bit, because that's a move that Byron, his former tag partner, used to do quite a bit. Byron, we will be seeing later on in the card today. As Byron's had probably a better year than Ben this year. Benny, yeah, he cashed in that Money in the Bank briefcase, won the world title. He's not getting a chance to reclaim it. <laughs> Benny here, after seeing his matches against Ace Reeves, it seems like he's definitely being a lot more confident in himself and not showing off as much as he normally does. Yeah, and when he does show off, it always backfires, so I really hope that he can learn to control himself and get the momentum that he needs to win the match. <laughs> ben is hopefully starting to realize that the cockiness that he has has been his greatest downfall in recent weeks. And uh, another downfall of his is uh, trying too, too many things at once as he tried to go for that drop kick to the back and he been able to get out of the way. Now following up with a clothesline and another one. Duck under, power slam. But Benny, able to roll away, attempts the boot to the gut. Oh no, Ethan with a German suplex. Sends him across the ring. And he retreats to the ropes. And grabs him and then puts him back on the ropes. And again, the decapitator on the top rope. Driving his face into that, like, that's a rope. So that does a lot of damage to the face. Speaking of damage. To the face. One, two. Only a two count as Benny's able to kick out. And he's definitely showing more resiliency than he did on any of the matches against Ace Reeves. This match itself might be longer than all three of those matches combined. That's great. I don't know, those... Those matches were, at least the last one was really a very long, decent match. And now Benny is caught in an abdominal stretch. If Ethan was smart, he'd start driving the fist into the torso while he's doing this to apply some extra pressure. And there you see Benny with the hip toss to get out of it. Snamara takedown. Side drop kick. Oh my god! He said, fuck your shit. Pump handle into the sit-out face buster. One, two, three. Oh, oh. Here's the resiliency I was just talking about with Benny. <laughs> that, looked, that looked like a three to me, but the ref says otherwise. You can always look back at it later, but the hell this match is going to continue. And he's definitely hurt. You show him hurt to try to win. Oh god, DDT. Benny and Banks holding his face on. You, you could, yeah, you could see it on his fingers when he's uh, right after he touched his thing, his hands there. He's covered in blood. You know, it might be under his hair, but you know, he's got blood dripping. A liger bomb by Banks. Keeps a hold of him for the pin. One, two. Ethan Walker able to kick out it. Two. Benny is extremely frustrated. Benny felt that he had his opportunity to finally win. He's gonna get. Now he's going to the middle rope. Worst moonsault ever. Hook in the leg. One, two, three. Benny finally snaps his losing streak and earned himself a title match in the process. He finally gets a win. And to, you know, slap my point out the window about the worst moonsault ever being a very bad decision, he wins with the worst moonsault ever. But keep in mind, he went through hell to win this match, and so did Ethan Walker to get through the match in the first place. Because Benny Banks wasn't a slouch, and neither was Ethan Walker. Yeah, Benny showed a lot more resiliency than he has just in recent months in general. There, on the replay especially, you see the kick out where it was so close that even I thought it was a three count. It's verifying proof that it was not a three. Jesus. 
Look at the blood on his face. Yeah. I mean, we can Congrats say this Benny, about Benny. We said that he's had a lot, that he's had a down year this year, but he didn't win last time he was here all, at last stand. It's a lot better this time around. Yes. Yes, it was. You know, in fairness, last year for last stand, he was also wrestling in a suit and tie, so that could have also restricted him. Yeah. Benny has made some weird choices. All right, let's see what our next matchup will be. Should we go uh, tag team or should we go s singles women's? Uh, I'd go. No. Let's go. Let's. We have to do tag team or yeah. women's tag team before the singles. I was gonna say women's because... tag should be next. All right, let's do women's tag. Satori sisters versus the queens of winter. Turn that entrance off. Put them over here. For some reason, they're not a tag team, so I need to actually fix that. The frick. I don't know what her second tire is, so I'm not going to use it. Yeah, Sorry. just be safe. This is a rematch, too, so that should be fun. Those will be up in the stream to make sure that the way is not bad. Hmm? Close and reopen the stream to make sure that my delay is, does not just get more and more as the stream goes on. My commentator friend is sick? What do you mean? Me? He thinks that I sound sick. No, I sound sick. Well, good thing that we're at a different location from the show. Because... Because I'm the one who's over here sniffling. Yeah. Best part of doing commentary from a secondary location. Yes. Social distancing. Yeah. Here we is go. Safe show. With our uh, sold out crowd. Sold Emily out. Parker. So pushing, I believe that was uh, Sarah, right? I'm, I'm always going to mess up names. I'm not good at remembering names. I'm sorry. Emily with the big drop kick. I'm fairly certain that's Sarah. I could be honest. I don't know. Let's just I assume should. that you're right. More attention. Says bye. Stun dog millionaire by Emily Parker. You almost gotta wonder how different things will be from this match compared to uh, the Revolt the Forever Revolt. match that they had against each other. Well, we both you know, have had time to on both teams, I should say. I've had times I've had time to train. Emily, uh, a little bit too caught. Like, oh, what the hell? I don't know if the ref should be allowing that right there, but I I'm, guess he's going to. She got out of the ring before the count of five, so it's all illegal. 
Yeah, but now she's in the ring. Snapmare takedown to Emily. Goes for the knee, but em she gets out of the way. Big drop kick there. Now tagging in Yuki. Ooh. It almost looked like uh, she was trying to go for a clothesline, but got caught with a boot instead. Now she tagged back out to Sarah. So with the suplex. With the back suplex. Yes, and now uh, Snake Eyes on the top rope. Or the buckle, sorry. Clothesline return. Irish whip into the corner where Emily awaits the tag team maneuver. We don't we don't get to see tag moves very often, but a double drop kick there. Very nice. Deep six suplex by Emily Parker. Dragging her, oh, I guess, t away from the ropes here. As she goes for the cover, face is full of forearm there. Tagging back out to Yuki. Big forearms from her Karana there. Not allowing her to crawl over to the to the corner to try to get the tag. Backbreaker. Slam. Nice. Big Northern Lights suplex by Sarah. Versus the strike. Monkey flip into the corner. Showing a very aggressive side here in this match. I mean, it's a grudge match in in a sort of way, considering these two teams have had one previous match against each other. And it was a nice matchup at that. But these two teams, they really need to put everything they have into this fight in order to really solidify either the, the new champs or their reign as the current champs. I mean, it's not every day that you... <laughs> get to go out and get title matches. So they have to make the most of their opportunity that they can here tonight. Very <laughs> much so. Dude, what the fuck? Seemed to be a botched mushroom stuff, though. It, which yeah, it looked like she uh, completely backflipped there. That ab abdominal stretch is a very common maneuver tonight, I guess. But a very different reversal to get out of it from Emily. Yeah, with the head scissor Irish pitch, though. Irish whip attempted, sent into the corner. Flatliner on the bu middle buckle there. Ooh, that's a that was a very smart thing to do there. Yeah. Damage, go back to tag, back out. Not just that, but the fact that she went for that spinning roundhouse to the top, like to the head. And as she was going for it, she got kicked in the other leg, which knocked her on her face. But now we see Emily Parker on the top rope with Rachel up there. Double knees to the mat from the top buckle. Going for the pin. What? Only a one, as uh, that's all she can get. I mean, this is what we were talking about by doing it, only putting everything that you can to solidify her aid and so the new chance. After all of this damage, it's still only a one can be a brain buster. Yeah. Big Hurricane again by Yuki. Fireman carry. What is she gonna do? 
GTS, go to sleep. One, two, only a two count there. Rachel goes for the spin, but gets a forearm into the face. A running grapple attempted as she gets sent over the top rope. And now to the floor on the outside. And you got to you gotta really suspect the possibilities here, just like with the Benny and Ethan Walker match. Like, this, this could end up being extremely dangerous for anyone and everyone involved on the outside. Yeah, they don't... They With the rigid edges of those steel steps as she hit it, I mean, a lot of possible damage could be done there. I don't think there's a 20 count on this match because I think I forgot to do that. We'll find out in a couple of seconds or whatever. Count of eight, almost. Almost got a nine count as Rachel sends Yuki back in the ring and she gets back in the ring herself, not allowing a possible count out as she tags out to Sarah. I mean, after finding out it's out of the ring, she's definitely going to need a bit of a rest back up to just talk tag on her part. And Sarah again with that the big accident. kick to the head. Yeah. One. Only a one count there. I need to stop saying there at the end. There. Yeah. Fireman carry takeover. Catching her off guard as she Irish whips her into the corner. We might see another tag team maneuver. No, she's not going for a tag move. She decides to go in reverse. And now Emily tags herself in. And roundhouse kick to the head. Cover. One. Only one. There. Nope. Sweeps the leg. Knee bar. Or is that a Achilles lock? If any, I don't know which one that would be called there. Fuck. <laughs> Fireman take you over. Dragon suplex dropping her on her neck. I've noticed the increase of neck bumps on VPW lately. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a very sensitive spot to get dropped on that no matter how you hit that, it's going to hurt. It's going to be a damage to your opponent. There's a two counter there. Wheelbarrow into the stunner. Cover again could be it. One, two, three. Satoru Sisters picking up the win again as Yuki just does not really try to get to the pin to break it up. She did try, but she started trying a little bit too late there. Yeah, there. Where we see some more highlights of the match. I would call it a close match, but I don't really know how close it would have been had both both teams been on the same page. Congrats on their first successful defense, though. The women's division, or the women's tag division, 
really just got put on notice that they're the first and current champs aren't slouches. They're not going to be pushovers. It's going to take something really special to defeat them as we go on to our next matchup. And I do believe it's time for the women's title match to the one-on-one -on -one between Lexi Monaz and challenger Veronica Martin. Here we go. Lexi Monaz has been the women's champion two times now. Looking to keep the title around her waist here. All right. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. And is for the Women's Championship. Veronica Martin in this matchup. She's coming off of a big win in a multi-woman matchup, taking on former women's champion Ashley Rain, Emily Parker, and Louise Bates to win this opportunity. Not only that, but she beat Louise Bates on Relentless the week, well, the episode prior to the uprising. But she's got a big opportunity here as a... Uh, She's she's going for her first women's championship match on VPW. And she could win this. She has every chance, like just as many chances as anyone else could in a match like this to win a title on her first try. She's got a lot less material to work off of in a singles capacity. So it's a lot harder for Lexi to study her for this match.
like I, I was going to say before, Lexi is coming off of not one, but two upset losses. Losing on Uprising against Kate Whitaker in an open challenge, followed up by a loss to uh, an open challenge from Candy Vega. So she's not doing so great in the run up to this pay per view, but she has every, she has the ability to do so much better in this matchup if she just. Uh, if she just apply herself and stop being so cocky, as we heard her on commentary, she thinks she's uh she thinks she's a diamond in the rough when it comes to the women's division. So she really needs to get out of her own head and get into the head of her opponent. Introducing the challenger from Newport, Wales, Victoria Martin. And introducing the champion. From Honolulu, Hawaii, she is the the Queen Lex E. The announcer said it as uh, as well as. I tried to about it, how Lexi's in her own head. She's the queen in her own right, or a self-proclaimed queen, I should say. So let's see how she does in this matchup and if she could fare as well as she thinks she can. Lock up center of the ring. Lexi catching Veronica off guard as she pushes her into the corner. Referee is going to have to get up in between those two. And Lexi... Not giving a clean break. And there's that running knee. Lexi's got to have a mean streak here because she's greatly at a disadvantage when it comes to size and power as Veronica Martin almost doubles both of her strength and height. So she's really got to she's really got to work harder to get these offensive moves to be more effective and she's doing everything she can and she's starting to make it seem a little bit easier for herself she's getting a lot of quick moves done in quick uh, quick succession I'm trying that word i tried it i tried it i tried it there's that rolling kick by veronica she didn't have to do much besides just roll into it because she's like i said she's taller than lexi so she doesn't have to do more than just that little basic roll to actually connect the kick. Sending Lexi into the corner. Turns her around. What is she gonna do? She sets her up on the top rope. Sidewalk. Slam from the top rope. More so the middle, but either way. Lexi continuing to be a little bit dominant in this match. Going for the cover with a hooked leg. She's got to remain dominant in a match like this or else she will lose. As we've already seen, like I said, with uh, Candy Vega and Kate Whitaker, if she doesn't stay defensive and you know heavy, if she doesn't have the defense or the offense on her side, she will not be able to win this match. Veronica Martin, for the first time in this match, retreating to the outside but stays on the apron. There's a strike by Veronica. Followed by a forearm smash, sends her into the corner. Turns her around a second time. Could we see that sidewalk slam again? No, Lexi not allowing it. And now she's on the top rope. Misses the dive of whatever she was doing, but catches her with the kick on the mat. 
Perkarana by Veronica. Nice agility on display. Now, there's, I know I say it all the time, but the size of Veronica Martin, she should be using that to her advantage. And in this case, she did use the size. I mean, she jumped over the attempt of a strike, but it doesn't matter. She got a little bit too cocky, and it costs her here as Lexi's working on that left arm. But Veronica just catches the leg and not allowing her to kick her completely in the chest there. Boot attempt. Lexi reverses. Fall away slam. Now has her on the top rope, but Veronica reverses. Drops her down. Arm bar, but she's caught in the ropes. So the arm bar can only do so much damage before the ref is forced to break up the submission. Irish whip into the ropes by Lexi. Drop down, but Veronica kicks her off. Dodges the grapple and kick to the leg. Now repeatedly kicking the leg. She's got she's got a target set here. One. Only a one there. <laughs> This is the that uh, big clubbing strike, but gets her with an arm drag, clothesline into the corner. Now she's seated down in the bottom rope. Veronica running knee to the face. Lexi was deeply locked in that armbar, but she's able to break out and find an opening to go for him. Grapple, but Veronica, Russian leg sweep there. But the possum pin by Lexi. One, two, kick out at two. Veronica not going down as easy as Lexi would believe, but she's going to try to chop her down if she has to. Line and a second one sends her in the corner. Big splash off the ropes, duck under, and a big leaping clothesline with the kip up. Moonsault with the cover. One, two, kick out by Martin. That standing moonsault was nearly the end of the match for Veronica Martin here. Sets her in the corner. Lexi could be setting up for the final blow of this match, but not able to. With the spear, Martin's now waking her up. Lexi, I believe, was trying to go for that package super kick in the corner, but Veronica Martin stopping it, but standing completely still. I don't know if she's, uh, she's too aware of the situation she's in right now. She needs to work fast. Oh, she is now clothesline. We're seeing Veronica do the exact same thing that Lexi just did to her. Maybe this is a bit of a sp like spit in the face of Lexi Linez. Insult to injury to say anything more about it as she catches her with the boot to the gut. Powerbomb on the knees, cover. One, two, three. Veronica Martin your new women's champion. And Lexi definitely trying everything she could. She did almost everything in her playbook to win this match. I believe if she would have hit that black mask kick like she used to always hit, it would have been over then and there. But there it is, that power bomb, that power bomb into the lung blower. That is how it ended for Lexi Monez. And new W, Victoria Martin.
This is the first time in quite some time the women's champion has been so completely new. All right, let's get on to our next matchup, which will be let's actually uh I was thinking I could do the tag team match now, the prestige versus. The boys for the tag titles. Wrong prestige win over there. Unfortunately, going into this matchup, the the boys are at a strong disadvantage as uh, Chase Hawkins, after a very, very long matchup, may have been badly injured to... A point to where he probably shouldn't even be in this matchup. As uh, he took on with Georgie Mac, obviously, on APW. Took on Enzo San Martino and Matt Bailey, the other two members of Prestige, re representing uh, Uprising. Why? What the fuck? Here we go. Here we go. As I already said, there's a very strong chance that Georgie Mack might be in this match completely by himself. It might just be a handicap match. Depending on the situation of Georgie, well, of Chase Hawkins, what kind of condition he might be in after the, the attack that he received at the hands of the other two members of Prestige. As not only was he brutally attacked by the leg as you see, Philip Sheffield, as I was saying that, immediately was about to go for a drop kick to the knee. But not only the knees, but the shoulder and neck of Chase Hawkins, those have also been blatantly targeted by the, the, by the members of Prestige. So all it really could take is a couple of suplexes, maybe even a knee bar. And this match could be completely over for Du Bois, and Prestige could be the first ever four-time champs. And he's being smart. He He's getting out of the ring, letting Georgie Mack... I know Georgie's not in the best shape either, uh, after that match especially. But this is definitely the better option for a match like this. You want to put the guy in that's not got a prior injury under his belt. 
as this has been a this is so far a really technical match back and forth that rear hammer lock by Georgie Mack and gets caught with an arm bar rolling out of it continuing the technical offense as he gets behind him he does the go behind and gets the backbreaker on the knee front face lock sweeps the leg now Chase very clearly taking a little bit of inspiration from Prestige as he noticed the knee brace of Scott Osborne and went for it. Look at those flurry of strikes. Taking him down, going for the pin. Not even a one count. Chase Hawkins grabs him by the head, looking to put him in the corner. Yes, he does. Tag team time. Snammer takedown. Assisted. Big boy senton. Doss. Well, ooh, 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 not Doss. Whoops. Osborne. Able to roll completely in a circle before getting over to his corner there. And Again, the the boys here are working on the legs. A little bit of uh, deja vu for Prestige. And a little bit of deja vu for the boys as Philip Sheffield drops Georgie Mack straight on his head with that German suplex. Sweeps the legs. Familiar ground. Chris Lock reversed. Drops him on his face with that, with the, I guess the, I don't know what to call it. One. Sheffield back up to his feet immediately. And the air raid crash neck breaker covers. One, two, kick out at two again. Tags out to Chase Hawkins. I still don't know if this is a good idea putting Chase Hawkins in a match. Especially like, like if we've already discovered or established. He's not 100% going into this matchup. And there's also a lot of rumblings going around that there might not be much of a future for Chase Hawkins coming up soon. Oh, Jesus. Dropping him from the top rope onto his shoulder. And that clearly threw Chase Hawkins off his game there. As he's dropped on the neck and shoulders again. I can't stress enough how badly damaged he is going into this matchup. There's a there's a massive target on not as not as just his legs, his neck, but his shoulders too. He could get completely injured in this matchup, and there's not a thing that can be done except for the ref stopping this match. But I don't think Chase Hawkins would let the ref stop the match. But it doesn't matter. German suplex again. If enough damage is done to Chase Hawkins' neck, the match might not even last longer than five minutes. My dragon suplex. I can't stress enough that the amount of attacks done to the neck, in, it's very much a, a target that all four members of Prestige have set in motion and they all have agreed to take that opportunity. As Chase Hawkins realizing the, the, the severity of the situation gets out of the ring, at the first opportunity that he got. Reversal by Sheffield. Sweeps the legs with a barrel roll. There's a tiger suplex dropping him with the bridge. Not even a one count.
Osborne's taking very heavy precautions when he goes in for a strike. He always makes sure he has a little bit of room, and neither of the Prestige members are getting close enough to get hit with whatever Georgia Mack has tried to grapple or strike with each time. Now a tag team maneuver from Prestige as Scott Osborne looks to stomp on the knee. Turns him around, up on the shoulders. Torture rack, power bomb, hooking him up. One. Ooh, only a one count though. Let me just stop saying that. Judas effect, back elbow. Chase Hawkins really needs to get in there. I know he's badly hurt, but he needs to get in there immediately. Two. Able to kick out, and the pin was broken up. And he was in the ring for less than a second and was caught with that dragon suplex. Chase Hawkins is completely out now as he's on the floor recovering from that dragon suplex. Georgie Mack, from the start, has really been in this match all on his own. And it's more obvious now than it was before. But he's fighting back with all of his will that he can. One. Ooh, only a one. Osborne looking to take him back to the corner. Snammer takedown. Oh, look at this. He's driving the fist into the temple of Mac, and it's gonna just throw his head down. Knee to the gut. Working on the shoulder continuously. Up on the shoulders. Could see something big. Discus punch. Picks him back up. He's going to do something else here. Air raid crash. With the hook of the leg. One, two, kick out at two. Duck under. Forearm strike. Another one. Duck under again. Big spine buster. And a cannonball in the corner. Oh, it looks like he went to tag out the Hawkins, but Hawkins is he's not in sh in the good shape right now. I don't think it's the best idea to tag out to him. Or even attempt to tag as he uh, refused to stand up to get the tag. Osborne with a back elbow there. Sending him into the corner. Boot to the face. Bulldog by Georgie Mack. Chop attempt. Duck under, clothesline by Georgie. He's telling him to get up. He's going to go for it. maybe that air raid crash again. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? Oh, my God. But wait. No, no, no. He picks him back up. And Osborne, I mean, he was definitely affected. He's bleeding now. But that was a double, I guess, a straight jacket lifting DDT. And I don't know why he didn't go for the pin. And it really cost Du Bois right there as uh, playing ring around the rosy being very annoying. Oh, and he used it to his advantage with that regal plex. Hawkins in the ring. Big drop kick onto Osborne. Now he's telling him to get up. He's going to try to take this opportunity. But Osborne able to forearm. Turns him around. Up on the shoulders. We're going to see the torture rack into the powerbomb again. Covers. 
hooks the leg. One, two, three. Your four time tag team champions, the prestige. What a, they're setting a record here. Again, they are the, they were not only the first ever three time, but now they're the first ever to hit four time tag champs. I don't know how they do it. Prestige, again, I say it, four-time tag champs. And you can't, you can't stress enough the fact that they didn't go into this match without any help. They had the other two members of Prestige wear down the boys completely to the point where this match was almost easy pickings for the Prestige. On to our next match. I do think we're down to only singles matches from this point on. Yeah, only singles matches now. As we're going to see Justice Stone versus Jacob Wells in an Iron Man match. The winner gets to steal a single draft pick. Well, single roster member from the other show. I do believe this is supposed to be an Iron Man match as well. So I need to actually... Ooh, I don't know if I want to do an hour. I'll do 30. Goes off because you. Fingers crossed I chose the right version of Wells. All right, battle of the GMs. This is more than battle of battle of the GMs at this point. This is a feud that's been going on for a very long time. 
This goes way back to uh, the following contest is scheduled for one listen. Making his way to the ring from Manchester, England, weighing in at 231 pounds, Justice Stone. All right, this goes way back to last year. Way, I think it was right before last stand or way before last stand. Well, it doesn't matter. Jacob Wells did an open challenge for the world heavyweight title. And two people ended up accepting the challenge. Justice Stone and one other man. Stone won the title in that triple threat. And it went back to Wells not too long after that. Or... I don't know how long after that. I forget how many days exactly, but Stone and Wells have gone back and forth so many times, and Justice Stone has never defeated Jacob Wells in a singles match. This might be the one chance he could. Sorry, I just got a phone call there. Did turn my ringtone down. Anyways, he has never defeated Jacob Wells in a singles match. And tonight is another opportunity for him to do so. Not just a normal match either. This is an Ironman match. 30 minutes. Someone has to win, and they have 30 minutes to do so. So Justice Stone can beat him more than once in one night to finally say that he beat Jacob Wells. This is Jacob Wells' first singles match in VPW since the earlier half of this year. Justice Stone as well has not been booked in a singles match in quite some time in BPW. Both of these men, I mean at least Stone did look, he looked very ready to be in this match, not so much for Wells. Stone immediately with those elbows to the torso bloody Sunday by Justice Stone remember that's Jacob Wells' old finisher he's uh, just throwing it in the face of Wells that he knows him like the back of his hand both of these men know each other very well because they were tag champs together and not only that but when you work against each other in world title matches frequently you learn the, man the maneuvers that your opponent does you start to understand the person you're going up against quite a bit. Catches him with a clothesline to the back of the head. Stone reverses and punches him straight in the stomach. Forearm to the face. There's that German suplex. Stone boots to the face. This this all stems back, you know, like I said, a year, but it all really started kicking off recently when uh, Stone and Wells returned as a tag team to face Prestige. And it was all a setup from Jacob Wells to get close to J to Justice Stone so that he could attack him after the match, which was all rigged so that Prestige could just immediately get the title opportunity here at the pay-per-view. And it seems to have been working for him. But tonight, like, like I've already stated, this is a grudge match beyond belief. Stone, after that attack on Uprising, came to Relentless. Uh, he came to Relentless so that he could back up Brandon Alexander in his match against Kenji. But it turned out that it was all a ruse, a setup from him too. 
He showed up on Relentless with Dan Masters and attacked Jacob Wells backstage. There's a lot of heat going on between these two. And Wells is trying to go for the pin there. Wells goes for the boot to the gut. Stone reverses into the German suplex. Wells retreating to the outside onto the apron to try to you know, make up for lost ground, but he gets sent to the outside with that spear off the apron. But Stone, he's a, as, uh, as honorable as he is, brutal chose to throw him back in the ring. Reversal by Stone. Reversal by Wells, and as Stone went over, he smacked his legs on the rope. He could have messed up his knee there. Stone reverses again. Irish whip backed over the top rope. And again, sending him to the floor. Maybe this time he'll actually do something on the floor for that extra amount of damage. Catches him with a hurricanrana. Throws him back in the ring. The hurricanrana was all he did on the floor there. Might have been enough to do a little bit. Now deadlift, possibly the gut wrench suplex as he hits one gut wrench suplex. Again with the bloody Sunday. This is really showing that Stone hasn't been in the ring in a singles capacity in quite some time, that he hasn't been doing much more than that bloody Sunday, to say the least. Reversal by both men. Headlock driver by Wells. Rolls him over, going for the cover, hooking the leg at the same time. One. Two, only a two count. Wells possibly looking for that frog splash. Yes, he is as he goes up to the top rope. Lands it perfectly as he covers, hook in the leg. One, two, kick out at two. Stone able, able to kick out at two. Not much of a surprise in my opinion, but both of these men, like I said, know each other so well that it's it's not hard to figure out which man could get the upper hand at any moment here. Wells has him in the corner. European uppercuts while he's trapped in the corner. Irish whip to the other side of the ring. And he follows quickly behind, doing it again. Wells off the ropes, big drop kick. Lifts him back up. Headlock driver again, center of the ring. Not so center anymore, cover. One, two. Stone managing a kick out again. I'm not exactly sure what Jacob Wells is thinking. Boot to the back. He might be thinking frog splash again. Yes, he is. From the top, and the knees are up for Jacob Wells. But he, oh, wait a minute. Cross face. He gets him in a cross face, not allowing him to capitalize from the knees to the gut. Stone breaking out of the cross face. Boo to the gut. Irish whip into the ropes. Dodges. Oh, chopping him in the face. Wells is getting extremely lucky that he's getting out of the way when he does. Goes for a pin. One.
Misses the kick. Stone with a big clothesline to the back of the head. Now Wells on the ropes. Stone looking to do something here. Sets him on the middle rope. What is he doing here? Oh, he's doing the neck breaker. Now, a very unknown thing that Wells used to do quite a bit in his career in the early days is that neck breaker. So Stone may have been scouting a little bit of early Wells material. Black Mass kick to the face. Cover. Hooks the leg. One, two. Kick out at two from Wells. We're, we got 22 minutes left in this match. Someone needs to get a fall here. Forearm and a second one. Duck under Pele kick by Stone. Misses the jab attempt. But he catches him with the Northern Lights. Float over. Final cut. Yet again, I, I hate to keep mentioning it, but the final cut was Jacob Wells' old finisher. It's a lot of insult to injury here tonight. Basically, anything you could do, I could do better is what Justice Stone is telling jo Jacob Wells. As Wells catches him with a straight jacket neck breaker. Covers him. One, two. Boot to the gut, attempted. Again, catching the leg and tosses him with that German suplex. Wells retreating to the corner this time instead of the apron. Now sends him to the opposite side of the ring. What is Stone doing? Is Stone, Stone's doing what Emily Parker did earlier. Dropping the knees from the top rope. And not following up with a pin. Wells reverses. Boot to the gut. Uppercut again. Reversal. Oh, Northern Lights. Driver. Or bomb, whatever it was. Stone stomps on the arm of Wells. Maybe the gut wrench again. Lifted him back up after that. Wells reverses with a fireman carry takeover. Wells grabs a hold of the head of Stone. Throws him over the rope to the outside. What is he gonna do on the floor? Clothesline sends it, that clothesline sent him into the announce table. I guess he did enough damage as he uh, smacked his face on the announce table. And a big spinning heel kick by Stone. Gets out of the way. Wells catches the elbow to the face. Snammer takedown. Oh, chainsaw by Jacob Wells, straight to the face. Wells with that suplex. Wiping the sweat from his face. This may be one of the longest matches Jacob Wells has ever had. Maybe Stone as well. Up on the shoulders. Dropping him on the knee. Big boy sent on by Wells. You have to wonder if Jake Wells needs to change his game plan here as he's going for all these moves and not doing much damage as Stone seems to be perfectly fine. I think he was looking for the Claymore but might be a little bit too close for comfort and he's not going to go for it. Wells taking advantage of the possibility. Oh, Jesus. 
Wells forearm in the face. Northern Lights bomb again, and Wells is bleeding from the head, but he's, that might have just rejuvenated him as he hits that sleeper slam. Wells, a, very much a man who tastes his blood, will taste his own blood, and starts to fire himself back up. But it doesn't seem to matter as he's getting dealt a very poor hand here as he uh, went for a forearm and got caught with a D German suplex. Just over 17 minutes left in this match. Wells reverses the grapple. Moves out of the way. Stone went for the face buster. Wells reverses with a clothesline. Still not a single fall in this matchup so far. Wells laying the boots into the face of Stone in the corner. I don't know how neither man in this match so far has gotten at least one win going forward. Wells, there's the frog splash. That could be the first fall. One, two, three. Jacob Wells getting the first fall and following up with a brain buster, not giving him any time to recover. Stone really needs to get one fall. If he could get the one fall, they could tie up the match and we could have a draw. Neck breaker by Wells again. Referee needs to check to see if those are open, open handed strikes. Wait a minute, Wells might be looking for the frog splash again. This time a little bit more dist, oh my, oh no. I was about to say a little bit more distance. That might have been a better way to hit it, but he went for a senton for some reason, and it really cost him as he landed flat on his back instead of hitting stone. But he's up again. Big missile drop kick. Goes for a pin. One, two. How much more could Stone take? He's got 15 minutes to take as much damage as he possibly can without getting a pin again. But Stone just got caught with the headlock driver. One, two, kick out at two. Wells is lifting him back up to his feet. What has he got in mind? Misses the clothesline. Oh no, the, that gotch style pile driver dropping him on his head. Dragging him away from the ropes. This could be it for Stone. One, two, oh, did you see how quickly he kicked out after the two was called? Well, going for a body slam. Stone shoves him off. Duck under, gets caught with a clothesline. Back up to the top rope, goes Wells. There's the frog splash again. One, two, three. Wells is up two to nothing. Stone needs to do something. Oh, I think he just found an opportunity as Wells completely gassed out. Just getting caught with that backslide driver. Now the Claymore is going to happen by Stone. Boot to the face. Go for the pin. One, two, three. Stone has one point. Needs to get a second one to tie up with 13 seconds. Well, not 13 seconds. 13 minutes. Dropping him on the knee with that gut buster. Maybe this black mass kick, is that what he's going to do? Thank you for the follow. There's the black mass kick. 
but he didn't go for the pin. Stone reverses again and again and again, sends him to the ropes. Misses the double stomp. Off the ropes, he sends him. Springboard, European uppercut. Goes for a cover. One, two. And you can really see the blood on the face of Wells starting to come through as he gets caught by Stone in that front face lock. Snapmare takedown into an overhead hammer lock. Punch to the gut. Stone catches him, not allowing him to go for that running uh, grapple that he was trying to do. But Wells reverses as well. And a kick to the gut by Stone. We really need him to, he really needs to tie up the score. And I think he can if he could just hit one more Claymore. It could be over for the, the two to one advantage that Wells has currently. And Stone stomps on the arm for a second time. Body slam attempt by Stone, forwarded by Wells. Reversal arm drag by Stone. Hurricanrana attempted, but Stone gets caught with a power bomb by Jacob Wells. The strength of Wells coming into play there as now he hits the headlock driver again. Look as he struggles to roll him over. One, two, oh my God, the kick out at two again. I don't know what, I don't know what Stone needs to do here, but whatever it is, he really needs to do it quickly as he's about to get hit with another God-style pile driver. Wells could have a three to one advantage in this matchup right now. One, two, kick out at two. Over, just over 10 minutes in this match left on the clock. Stone needs to tie this score up to be able to at least get some sort of advantage as a possibility for him here. Butterfly DDT covers him, but a rope break not allowing him to get the pin that he really deserved there. Dragon suplex dropping him on his head. This is a very competitive match. Backslide driver again. Cover him. One thing that I've been noticing quite a lot in this match is the fact that Stone has not been going for the covers when Wells has been going for the covers every single opportunity he gets. And that's very much to the detriment of Stone in this matchup and could be the reason why he may lose this match. But he is also busted open now. Both men are going to be battered and bloodied by the end of this match. Laying the elbows into the top of the head of Jacob Wells. Now again, stomping on the arm, but this time the right arm as well as. Oh, catches him with the power bomb. Goes for a cover. One, two. Stone is trying some high risk maneuvers and it's backfired almost every single time. Wells needs to get caught with something by Stone. This match is going extremely poorly for Stone and so far. He's still got eight minutes to get one more fall to tie it up. Two. 
Wells rolling him and himself back into the ring. Reversal by Stone. Tried to boot him in the gut, but not quick enough to the strike as Wells misses the rolling elbow and tries to go for a waist lock. Reversal by Wells again. Stone with a forearm to the face. Reversal arm drag by Wells. There's a cravat neck breaker dropping him on his head. Or more his neck than anything. This is extremely competitive. Stone needs to hit that big move. He needs to get a point. Oh, Dreamweaver by Jacob Wells. Sends him in the corner. Wells reverses. Swings the legs out. Neckbreaker. Final cut combo. Stone is trying to fight back as much as he can, but Wells is just too quick. Now a grounded octopus stretch here. But Stone is continuing to fight out of these attempts from, from Wells. Hip toss. Stone really needs, he, he's wasting time. He's got six minutes left on the clock. He really needs to go for the finish and he must have heard me as now he's going for the finish. He needs to hit this black mass, tie up the score. But Wells caught the leg, sweeping it. Goes for the pin, one, two. I'm not exactly sure how Wells is continuing to do this, this deep into this matchup. Oh, wait a minute. Cobra clutch. And he's got him grounded. He's going to try to make him submit. Stone submits. Wells is up four to one. Neck breaker again and again and again. There's no way within five minutes that Justice Stone can make up for two, not two, three losses now. And a brain buster from Jacob Wells again. That might have just been the nail in the coffin. No, it wasn't. Olympic slam from Wells. Now perched for that frog splash again, but the knees are up. Stone really needs to, and I, I can't stress enough, he needs to hit one big move. He needs to at least even the score a little bit for himself because one, one win to, f to four losses is sad. The rope break yet again screwing him out of the out of the pin. He could have won uh, at least one more up uh, one more fucking fall for himself. But not able to do it as the ref calls the rope break for the second time. Both of these men are going to be extremely bruised by the end of this match. Stone is wasting time. And Wells is realizing that Stone is completely out of it. He doesn't realize where he is probably at this point. Reversal by Wells again. Snapmare attempt. European uppercut by Stone. Now catching him again with that stomp on the shoulder or the elbow more is what I meant to say. Stone up and over the shoulders of Wells. Goes for the forearm. Wells reverses. Irish whip into the ropes. Goes for the grapple. Not able to do it. Snapmare takedown. 
Oh, he's just going to go for a pin off of that. One, two. Very clearly not enough to win a fall there. Strike to this torso. Let's take over again. We got over just over two minutes left of the match. There's nothing, and I really can't stress it enough, there's nothing Justice Stone can do at this point. Wells just needs to sit and run out the timer at this point. Catches him with that clothesline to the back of the head. But it won't be enough. As, oh my, a headlock driver again. Wells could get another fall here. One, two, three. Getting extreme deja vu here for Justice Stone. There's the neck breaker. Wells is exhausted, but he's got a little bit left in the tank. He's going for that frog splash again. He hits it, covers him. One, two, three. I mean, there's not much I could say about what's going on here except for Wells is dominating the match. And it's, I mean, in fairness, it's not completely one-sided or anything, but at every chance that Stone has had to get a pin, the ref has said it's a rope break or he doesn't go for a pin. And that has severely affected the outcome of this matchup. We have 50 seconds left on the clock, or maybe a little under that. I might be reading the wrong night, like the wrong sign there. But we are so far from a possibility of Stone winning at least one more fall that it's embarrassing to say that Stone had a chance in this matchup. Shoves him off. Stone is trying everything he can. Wells taking his time retreating into the corner. What in the... Stone really doing anything he can, but he, there is not enough time for him to do anything. Wells getting out of the ring to win the match and spare himself some extra time. This means that Jacob Wells gets to choose one person from the Uprising roster to take over to Relentless. The referee, for some reason, counting out Justice Stone. I think Justice Stone's not going to make the count. On to our semi-main event. As Joe Blade, not Joe Blade, uh, sorry, Byron X-12 takes on Kenji Ure in a two out of three falls Extreme Rules match. What a match to go to right after a 30-minute Iron Man match, but that's how the cookie crumbles. I don't, wait, I should probably actually set it as an Extreme Rules so that it, you know, has the Extreme Rules thing.
Alright, let's do this. And I do believe the game has crashed. I don't think I could do the two out of three falls extreme rules thing without it crashing, but I'll try it again. If it crashes again, I won't be able to do it, but I'll try it anyway. Fingers crossed, boys. Hello. The game might crash again, so... Oh, it worked. 
I don't know if you guys can even see the show right now because it's telling me on my computer that it's unstable. So if you could see the if you could see the stream, let me know. Uh, it's, like I said, nope, no game. That's weird. Uh, I may need to stop the stream and restart it real quick. It's only gonna split up the main event. 